Good morning and welcome to our morning musings. We are delighted to be together for this time of uh, in God's word and prayer. Let's begin with Luther's morning prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected me through the night from all harm and danger. I ask that you would also protect me today from sin and all evil, so that my life and actions may please you. Into your hands I commend myself, my body, my soul, and all that is mine. Let your holy angel be with me, so the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. So we've been spending some time looking at uh, lessons that are read to us in our worship, and this coming Sunday... We'll be reading again from the book of Romans in the 10th chapter. We looked at it a little bit yesterday, but I want to read it to you again uh, this morning, and then we'll dig a little deeper today. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteous that come from faith say, Do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believer with the heart, um, so, for one believes with the heart, and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth, so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. So yesterday we talked about just the binding truth that holds us together as Christians, regardless of our ancestry, regardless of how we live out our faith in this denomination or that denomination, but that all of us who say Jesus Christ is Lord uh, and all of us who trust in Jesus Christ for our salvation are one in the body of Christ. It's a gift and it's made possible because God draws near to us as close uh, as the words on our lips and as close as the beating of our hearts. Uh, so Paul now says, this is the foundation, the foundation of our faith. Uh, dis with, despite all these other differences of our past, despite all these differences of how we live it out, uh, the truth of the matter is everyone who proclaims Jesus Christ as Lord is part of the church of Jesus Christ. Then he raises an interesting question. How are people going to say Jesus Christ is Lord? unless someone tells them about Jesus Christ. And how are they going to believe, trust in this God, if they've never heard of what God has done for them in Jesus Christ? How are people going to hear? Well, you know, in some ways that's much more true in these days. I think the first thing we have to acknowledge is that there are a lot of people out who have not heard of Jesus Christ, or if they've heard of Jesus Christ, it's the worldly definition of Jesus Christ, this nice man who talked a lot about love long ago, um, who was kind of like a Jewish Buddha, um, who is um, a, a wonderful moral teacher. Um, so their understanding of God is is pretty misshapen by the world, uh, and they really don't know Jesus Christ. Um, there are a lot of folks who say, I, I really don't need Jesus Christ because I, I have my moral standards, uh, and I really don't want to let 
Jesus define for me who I am. You know, that's because you don't know who Jesus is. Um, that's because you don't understand that Jesus is a, not just someone who lived 2,000 years ago, but is the living presence of God and a power for a way of living that will transform your life that will transform your way of seeing the world, of seeing one another, and will literally change the world into a place of peace and harmony. How are people going to hear about it? Well, we're learning different ways, I suppose, in these pandemics. God has kind of forced us out of the church and into the world. And we have a hard time just meeting with people, talking with people, much less talking about Jesus Christ with people. But we need to find new ways to share Jesus Christ. Um, we know that the most effective way for people to hear the good news of God's love for them in Jesus Christ is probably not through people like me, a preacher. The world has pretty much decided that Preachers can't be trusted. Those Some of the folks in my profession have not done a very good job building tr trust. Uh, and others have been more interested in judging and condemning than they have been about bringing the love of Jesus Christ into people's lives. Um, for people to really get to know Jesus Christ, the words and the story of Jesus Christ are going to have to come from someone they already trust. If you're going to trust Jesus, who you can't see, you're going to need to meet that Jesus through the words and actions of someone you can see. That's you and me. We are the feet that carry the good news. And maybe instead of feet today, you could say we are the Internet. We are the Facebook. We are the emailers that bring the good news. Because we, we need to be willing to share with people this, this good news of Jesus Christ. Now, depending upon how strong our relationship is with the person that we want to bring Christ to, it may shape, change how we shape the message. Um, maybe the people that we are trying to reach out to don't understand that what Christians are about is caring for others in the name of Jesus Christ. And we can help them experience that. Experience is a really big, important part of coming to know and to trust in Jesus Christ. Um, so maybe when we're gathering food for the neighborhood co-op ministry, um, or we're uh, uh, donating blood, or if we're uh, helping some other ministry with the homeless or, or the hurting um, or maybe we're writing cards to people trapped in nursing homes and feeling isolated and abandoned. Um, we can invite our friends, and maybe they're not active Christians, to share with us the joy of reaching out and caring for another. That they could join us in generating supplies for the co-op ministry. That they could join us in those emails and postcards of encouragement and care for those who are kind of locked up during this pandemic. Um, maybe we can help and share with them the journey and the joy of serving Jesus Christ. And in the process, we've done it a while, let it be known that we do it because this is how we live out our faith in Jesus Christ. Um, maybe the person that we love is already in crisis. Maybe this pandemic has caused a crisis for them. How can we be there for them in Jesus Christ? How can we um, hear their pains, uh, share with them the struggles, maybe even help answer some of the struggles? Uh, again, because of Jesus Christ in our lives, we need to be sure to let them know at some point in the journey, we're doing this because of Christ. Um, otherwise, we, maybe we don't think we know the words of what to say. Well, you know, share a morning musing with them. If one of these things seems to be applicable to them, uh, direct them with a link to, hey, take a few minutes and listen to our pastor talk about 
these things. Or maybe you've got a book that you've read uh, that has found that your faith helps someone. So share with people resources that make Christ a living uh, deity, a living source of power and love and strength in your life today. But we've got to get the word out. People are trying to face this pandemic and all the mess in the world all by themselves. And God and Jesus Christ has always been bringing people together. Jews and Greeks in the days of Paul, um, and Baptists and Lutherans and Roman Catholics in today's world, bringing people together so that together God might love and care for them. Uh, so maybe today we could spend some time thinking about how, how can I reach out to someone that I know? that needs to know God's love. And then how will I let that message be known? By what I say, by what I do, by sharing a resource. I must firstly start with prayer. Pray for that person. Uh, pray for them that the Holy Spirit might move in their hearts. So let's end our time together this morning in prayer as well. We continue to pray for our members of Christ the King who are in rehab. I'll create a little quiet in the prayer as well for us to listen to God. You can think about it later this week, um, and uh, also a little time in there for you to lift up your own thoughts and prayers. So let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, there are so many in our world who do not know Jesus Christ or don't understand who Jesus Christ really is. Their warped understanding that has come to them through the world has left them to feel as if Jesus Christ is just another option in their life rather than a foundation as they face the challenges of life. Help us, Heavenly Father, to think about those in our circle of family and friends, those who we have a relationship with, but those that don't have a relationship with you. How can we bring your good news to them? Fill our hearts and our minds with ideas about how we can share Jesus Christ. If we need words, O oh Lord, give us words. If we need to do something, then give us the will to do it. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would now bless the person that I'm thinking about in my heart. Gracious Heavenly Father, I have asked you to fill my heart with words and my life with action. But before I do that, I'm going to pause and let me fill you with your word and your, your presence for me today. So fill this silence, O oh Lord, with a sense of your presence. Heavenly Father, you know that we want your presence in the lives of those who are struggling. So now hear our prayers for those we know who are in need of your peace. All this, O Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. 